happening there. Um, I'm very happy to be staying as spectacular and and uh, and I've seen it um, in various forms here. As spectacular as that is going to be, the Thunderdome. I feel like they have enough on their hands right now. Our partnership with Full Sail to me is uh, probably one of the most important partnerships we have, and I and I love it there. And um, right now we're there in this environment right now today with everything that's happening. Um, you can never say never. So. Um, we'll see where that all goes. And, you know, obviously on Friday night, everybody's going to get to see uh, their first shot of the Thunderdome. And I can tell you personally, for me, I, mean, I can't tell you how much we've missed everyone, our fans, everyone, just seeing everyone and, and having them be a part of it. And um, that energy, it's the secret sauce of everything we do. I cannot wait to get them back, whether that's on video or in any other way possible. Um, so the sooner we can do that, the better. And that's for every single thing we do uh you know we we are uh, wwe fans are, are everything to us so um i look forward to that but for the foreseeable future staying in um uh, in full sail or or at least for the immediate futures where we're at and we'll see where everything goes again we're we're figuring all this out just like everyone else is day by day and where we can do things to the best for our fans the safest way for our performers and and uh crew uh, that's what we will do Next, we'll move to Jason Powell with ProWrestling.net. Hey, Paul. How are you? Hey, Jason. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Thank you. Um, you mentioned in a CBS interview that the allegations made against Patrick Clark were looked into. There's an online accuser who seems to offer some compelling evidence, and he said that no one from the company has reached out to him. Nia Jax has also had some online negativity in response to what you said. Can you talk about the investigative steps that you guys took? And for that matter, is anyone going to reach out to this accuser? Did you consider this matter closed, or is it still open? So, obviously, we take all of these things very seriously. Allegations, misconduct um, of any nature, we take very seriously. Uh, I'll stand by what I said on CBS. We looked into it, didn't find anything there um, in the manner that, we, that you know, what we were looking for, and and um, we've moved on. But it doesn't change the fact that we take it seriously. If there's something else there, we'll look into it. Um, that goes across the board for anybody. But you know, uh, I'll work, uh, we've already talked about it, so I'd, I'd rather just uh, just move on to other topics. Thank you. Next, we have Mike Johnson with uh, PWInsider.com. Hey, Paul, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm hanging in there. Um, so there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about the return of fans via the Thunderdome, but the one thing everybody's kind of waiting with bated breath for is some sort of timeline as to when WWE might be able to tour again. With NXT, it's especially fascinating to me, since unless it's a takeover, in many cases it's smaller buildings, what sort of research has been done and what sort of preparations or ideas have been done to kind of prepare NXT for when there is a time to go back on the road and run some of these smaller buildings in Florida or places like Poughkeepsie, which are older and don't have the facilities of like a Madison Square Garden or a Barclays Center. Like what sort of research has the company put into that? It's, it's a constant, you know, they're constant. We are constantly looking into everything that we can do, whether that's, um, you know, having fans for television, whether that's having fans for live events, whether that is having, uh, you know, virtual fans. When, when we get to a point that we feel or that the world is at a point where it feels that it can return to those type of public gatherings safely and in a meaningful way um, for everybody involved, whether that be our talent or, you know, our crew and or fans then we'll address it. But we, we look into every option at all times. It's a never-ending uh, never ending search right now to try to get back to what we do. I know with uh, here in New York, there's a, with malls, they won't, they won't let them reopen until they're retrofitted with ultraviolet scrubbing of air conditioning and things like that. Is there possibly technology that you guys are tracking down that maybe you can take on the road and add to the road crew in terms of bringing things into some of these buildings to assist with the environment? Yeah, look, as I said, we're looking into every conceivable um, avenue. And, you know, it, it, I mean, it includes everything. So 
you know, the, the, the science that backs all of this up, the products that are out there, you have to look into, they have to be, um, legitimate. So we look into everything and when something comes up that we feel that is, we can do this in a reasonably or a, re a reasonable manner and that is safe and foremost for everybody involved, then, then that's what we'll do. All right. I really appreciate the time. Thanks. And, uh, hope to have a good show this weekend. Thank you, man. Next, we'll move to Connor Casey with comicbook.com. Hey, Connor. Appreciate you doing this today. Um, the, uh, there's, there's been some news this morning regarding Renee Young. I know there's only so much you can say about it right now. Uh, but in general, what has she meant uh, to you and to the company as a whole these past eight years? Yeah, I mean, we don't, we won't, I won't comment on, on that status and, you know, I'll let Renee uh, deal with that on her term. But as far as her as a, a person and as a, a part of WWE, it's been awesome. And, and, uh, she has been a, a large part of this. I've personally enjoyed working with her tremendously, and um, it's been awesome to see her do and attack different things within the company and, and try different roles. And you know, I th and I thought she's done an amazing job with all of them. Um, so you know, I'll let her handle the rest of it. But as far as her contributions, they've been they've been awesome. We'll move next to Tony Maglio with a wrap. Hey, Paul. Thanks for taking this. My uh, NXT questions have already been asked, so if you'll indulge me, I got a little bit obsessed, obsessed excuse me, with um, the idea of SummerSlam on a boat, those reports. Uh, you know, thoughts of Lex Luger helicoptering in to slam Yokozuna on a yacht sort of thing for me. I'm curious if you could tell us how realistic of an option that ever was that you guys looked into it and ultimately as much as I think the Thunderdome idea is awesome. Why no summer slam on a boat? <laughs> so every option was looked into, um, was that, uh, I think that, that, uh, that option had about as much chance as all the other options. Um, everything was looked into, um, across the board of, of any way that we can come back uh, to doing what we do safely and, and, uh, in the best way possible. So, um, you know, as you can imagine, things in a boat aren't quite so easy. I would imagine, uh, you know, even, even just the motion of the water or everything else, you know, I mean, so there, there's, there's issues with everything across the board. I think that when you see the Thunderdome, concept when you see SmackDown, when you see SummerSlam in that environment, um, I think you're going to understand why we went in the direction we did. It's spectacular. I think it's um, different than anything anybody else is doing out there, the level of it. Um, you know, I think you have read or, or heard stuff that Kevin Dunn has said about it. Uh, you know, one thing about Kevin's team they never cease to amaze me. So usually when they tell me something is going to be spectacular and then I see it in person, I'm like, wow, you completely undersold it. Uh, so, you know, I, I think when you get there and you see it, uh, you will understand why we went in the direction we did. Because even, even if you did it on a boat, there's, there's no fans. There's no, um, there's, there's nobody there, you know, and I, and I think that, so that weighs in as a factor as well. Thanks, Paul. Have a great show. Thank you. Next, we'll move to Nick Houseman with Wrestling Incorporated. Hi, Paul. Thank you very much for taking the time today. Sure. Thank you. Um, I want to ask you about NXT alumni Lars Sullivan, who's been sharing some workout videos recently. It has a lot of fans thinking he may be ready for a return. Do you have any update on Lars and where we could maybe see him next, maybe back in NXT? You know, to be honest, I, uh, you're telling me that he's been putting out uh, workout videos online is the first I hear of that. So, um, I, I have not, I have not seen those. I, to be honest, uh, don't have an update on that. Oh, oh okay. Um, yeah, well then yeah. can I ask, can I ask a quick follow-up then real quick? Is that all right? Yeah, no, you can actually ask a question. I didn't have, since I didn't have an answer to that one, go ahead and ask another one. 
No, that's fine. Uh, another question I had was, uh, you know, there's been reports that Randy Orton's been interested in working with several NXT talent. I mean, obviously he's on a tear right now. Has there been any talks of bringing in Orton to work with NXT, kind of like Charlotte did? Yeah, I mean, look, there's always conversations around stuff. Um, you know, whether it's it's uh, people coming down to NXT, whether it's uh, NXT talent uh, making a shift there and, and doing something there. There's always conversations, but when when you're doing uh, seven hours of live content every week and dealing with it in this environment where that at any given moment things can shift and talent can can move or or you know not be available or whatever, um, it it it's a domino effect. So so changing things and and trying to build in things to different days is very very difficult and and a lot more challenging than people would. Uh, would think I, you know, so while those options are always there and always discussed, getting them to fruition at this point in time sometimes is a little bit more difficult. But I, I, I can tell you this: Randy's a little bit more public about it, um, and you know, uh, puts it out on social and things like that. But I, I, I field calls all day long about uh, talent wanting to do something in NXT and vice versa. So it's it's there's a constant there. People see talent. You know, I know it from my end as a performer. When you see talent and, you know, you see somebody that's really good and, and it piques your interest, you think, oh, I'd like to work with them. You know, and that's what Randy is doing. Okay, cool. Thank you, Paul. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Next, we'll move to uh, Dave Meltzer with Wrestling Observer. Hey, Paul. How you doing? Hey, Dave. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I was going to ask, actually, almost everything I had in my notes has already been asked, but one one thing, um, you've been doing TV now, uh, pretty much live, but every week, you know, every week for about ten and a half months, and as far as ratings and just doing television in that type of a schedule, what, what are, like, the biggest lessons that you've learned about producing these shows? And also... Um, what um, is, is there going to be a new um, head writer for NXT? So as 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 far as the the writing of NXT goes, you know we we, we shift around a little bit um, as as things happen. I, we, I won't necessarily comment on uh, people that aren't aren't necessarily talent for us, um, but we have a team that works with. Uh, NXT that includes Shawn Michaels and Brian James, myself. So it's it's a a group, um, and, and the ideas all go through that. So um, it's really business as usual for us. Um, as far as um, lessons learned, yeah, I mean, look, there, there, there's a dramatic difference between um, doing tape television, doing live television, doing one hour of live television versus two hours. Um, I can tell you that three is exponentially harder than that. It, it's there's there's lessons everywhere. I think the biggest difficulty for us has been in in this time frame is just the shifting of everything. You know, um, COVID has really made doing all of this in a way exponentially harder. You have moments and times where things change um, at nobody's. You know. You, you, you can have the best stuff written and then you're, you're waiting to see if any of it can take place. And, um, when you have multiple brands and it can move people around and there's been numerous times where, you know, we have great plans for something. And then there's a moment where that person has to, um, go to a different brand for whatever reason, you know, uh, injury, whatever it is. And it, it changes everything. So the difficulty of dealing with that, and also the difficulty of just not having fans there, keeping the energy level up for talent, which they've done a phenomenal job of. Um, you know, anybody in this industry that is going out there in a business where we do what we do for that reaction, it's everything we do. It's, it's not like a sport where you look, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to win this game and I don't care if people like it, don't like it. I'm just going to tune everything out and go do it. Um, it's the exact opposite of that. And, and you're doing everything for that reaction and that reaction isn't there or is very small or is, you know, very few people, whatever that is, it changes the game dramatically and keeping talent, especially young talent that aren't necessarily used to that. And you've spent a lot of time teaching them to work towards that crowd and that 
performance level, and then it all changes for them. So th- it, that aspect of it has been incredibly difficult. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with where we are. I'm really happy with everything we're doing, the talent's level of engagement, talent's level of – and you know, I think for the most part – when I when I look at our roster, I, I see all the success at the top, but then where I'm even more excited is in the middle of, of all the people that are coming into their own in this extremely difficult environment and still knocking it out of the park and, and becoming something more um, every single week. You see the depth of our women's division. You see the depth of our of our roster across the board in NXT, and, and that is exciting to me. And, you know, what's, what's also very exciting to me is being able to get back to training because we haven't really been able to do that in, in the environment that we were in, TV is one thing. Um, getting them in a ring to train and, and, and have that level of strength and conditioning and training week-to-week basis, um, we, we haven't been doing that. And we just got back to that. We have a, a, a secondary facility that we're using with everybody moving out of the PC. That will come back into play. So, um, you know, now for us to be able to get everybody back into – you know, the day-to-day improving. They've, they've been sitting in some manner in neutral for six months, you know, um, and we do everything that we can to help them continue to improve. Uh, but it's it's virtual. It's, it's you know, us just talking to them. It's not in there doing it. And, and that's really now, I think, now it's a different game. And now we can get back to doing what we do in that manner safely, testing everybody, doing everything we can to make them stay safe. But... Um, that that part of it is very exciting. Thanks. Um, have a good show. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much. Next, we move to Sean Ross Sapp with Fightful. Hey, Sean. Hey, thank, thanks for taking the time. Uh, we, we've heard about maybe some mentalities and processes in the past about wrestlers going from NXT to Raw or SmackDown. How has that changed since you all landed on prime time on cable TV? Because I'm sure it's Nice to have some of those wrestlers move to Raw and SmackDown, but you all also have your own prime time two hour TV slot to, to worry about now. Yeah, and and um, that that definitely has changed that that mindset, right? Where there's there's different um, protocol and procedures around. Hey, we'd l- we'd like to move this talent. We'd like to do that, and you'll see that coming up in the draft, and um, you know later in the year, and you know. You d- you definitely have to think about it a lot more and and think about those changes. But I think long term, it's better for everybody. It's it's the opportunity to um, somebody wears, you know, has their their uh, their run in SmackDown or their run in Raw. They can come back and and totally change gears in a in a brand that feels totally different with a bit of a different style in NXT. Uh, maybe refresh and go someplace else to get a, a fresh coat of paint. Maybe they're doing something that didn't work. Maybe they want to try something completely different. You know, when, when you see talent um, that have been in the same company, and I, and I go back to the beginning of my career, to me, when I came into WWE and I would talk to Undertaker early and, and he'd talk about being been in the company for five or six years, that was unthinkable to me. Like, it, it just was like, Un- unreal that somebody could be that long in one place in one company and still be successful. And it was, you know, hard to believe. And now you have a lot of talent that have been in the company for 10 years, 15 years, whatever. Um, I think to have that ability to move around, refresh, uh, put a, a fresh coat of paint on something, start over with a different character or a different uh, take on who they are. I think that's important for everybody. And, and I think this opens up the door for them to be able to do that because like you said, Everybody having their own prime time live spot. The brands all become important in their own right, and you can't uh, you can't just take away from one, um, you know, to, to support the other. You, you have to support all of them. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. We'll next move to James Russellone with Miami Herald. Hey, congratulations on NXT TakeOver 30. Awesome accomplishment. Thank you. Want to talk about Karen Cross? What does he bring to the table? And also, to follow up a little bit on the brand, does having him and Keith Lee or any of the talent, because Karen's been there a few months, and I know he's wrestled for six-plus years, but 
uh, with him and with others, is the mindset, hey, if we have a chance and they're ready, let's have these big matches as soon as we can, rather than wait because we might lose them to Raw or SmackDown. Well, I, I think, so, one, let's go to Karrion. Um, you know, he's a, a phenomenal talent. I've seen him for a long time. Thought he had just, he, he's just got a charisma and an aura about him to me. Um, when I've seen him in other places, even just in bits and pieces, where you weren't really seeing the deep dive into, into who or what he was, you were really just seeing kind of him uh, performing, but you could sense that X factor and that uh, that character. And to me, that's still king, no matter what anybody says um, about any other aspect of the business. Charisma and, and that X factor is king um, for any talent. And he has that and then some. You know, uh, the learning curve is is steep when you get to to the WWE and to NXT, and and it's a different product. It it really is. It, there's a a television component to this that is different from anything else, and I I believe it's why you see difference in performers that have been here um, from anywhere else. Uh, that that's just the facts, and um, he's a sponge for the business and for learning it and it's one of my it's you know one of the things about him he's constantly asking questions and he is a sponge um his improvement rate and growth rate has been incredible just since walking through the door much like keith you know i think um everybody has their own pathway and it also depends on the moment in times of when they're walking in the door it's not about um getting to things faster it's about getting to them one, in the most meaningful way possible for them and for the fans, but also knowing where you're going long term. Uh, as you mentioned, across the brands and, you know, if, if you know, not in this instance, but if you know somebody is leaving or you know somebody's doing something else, whatever that is, you, you look at it differently and, and how you want to move across those those storylines. When, when, you know, I use the example of Matt Riddle when we knew um, – when that when that move uh, happened to SmackDown, you know we had the advance notice to know. We we booked accordingly, got to a place, you know, were able to do the fight bid with him and Thatcher, and it went out on a spectacular note, and and it was great for him and great for everybody else. So th- those are the goals: is is really to do things in the in the most meaningful way possible for everybody across the board, but also not rushing talent and not putting them in positions where. And, and this is always hard for everybody to understand and for them to understand, but you, you have to make a judgment call of when when they're ready to handle things in the best way possible. You want everybody to succeed in the biggest way possible and give them the opportunity to succeed. So if you feel like, man, I could put them in this right now, but it's a bit risky on, on this factor, let's clear that up. Let's let's get them where we're comfortable with all of that and then do it, and it'll be that much bigger so that they have every tool in their tool bag to to knock it out of the park when they get the opportunity. Hey, thank you, Paul. Next, we'll move to Justin LaBar with Busted Open Radio, Sirius XM. Hey, Justin. Hey, Paul. Um, so every Thursday, the television numbers come out and, you know, there's one side of the coin, people looking at, you know, who has the most viewership on Wednesday nights, uh, with the other goes to pro wrestling. And then it's, no, it's not viewership. It's the 18 to 49 key demo. Then no, it's, 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 it's who's in what quarter hours. Um, it's kind of become a funny comical thing to watch every Thursday to see fans and fan bases go back and forth. Uh, where do you stand? What do you interpret? What are you focused on? What, 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 what do you deem success? Well, I'm focused on NXT. It really, and and it's a funny thing because yeah, you see all the chatter and you see people arguing and they're like, geez. I guess for some, for a lot of people, it's just it's a part of that that argument and that level of engagement. I mean, thank God they do. They're interested in 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 the industry and the, the product and everything else. And the the arguments about it are passionate and, um, as you said, entertaining. Um, at the end of the day. For me, it's just it's about our product and our fans. We we put out the best product we can. Um, you hope fans enjoy it, and you hope they want to watch. And and that's really what you do. And if you're putting out a great fun product, and fans want to watch it, 
um, phenomenal. If they're not, then you got to rethink it and you got to go in a different direction. So we, we look at the breakdown of, of things much differently. You know, obviously you want the shows to be successful, um, but you're, you're looking at the, the numbers and, and what worked, what didn't, why little, little trends of different things between, you know, did, did these segments drop off when we went to this? Did it, did it pick up when it went to that for small reasons? Not necessarily always the, you know, people just jump to the biggest conclusion they can. Oh, this number went down. That town's not over. It, 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 so many, there's so many variables and factors in this, which is why people can argue about it from beginning of the morning till the end of the day. They can just go back and forth and argue, and you can make arguments one way, you can make arguments another. Have at it. Um, I, I don't worry about those arguments. I don't worry about the conversations. I don't worry about all that other stuff. I worry about NXT and making the best product possible. How are the talent uh, performing? What can we do better? How can we write better shows? How can we tell better storylines? Um, what people are, you know, enjoying and what they're not. And I'll be honest with you, um, I can't wait. The, the 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 fans of the WWE Universe are fans. It is why we do what we do. And having them in an arena to let you know what they love and they don't love, that's your true, uh, that's your true barometer. Social, um, you know, the, the, all those the digital the interactions, you know, there, there's so many factors to that and so much negativity to it. And then just people arguing, it's, it's hard to, to, to filter through everything. The, the true reactions are when you're in arenas and you have fans and uh, they can tell you what they think, what they like, what they don't like. That's the true reaction. So, you know, I, I can't express to you how much I miss that. You know, uh, years ago we put out the the video where uh, Daniel Bryan walked into the empty arena. Who would have ever thought, right? And and to some degree, um, that's where we are. Cannot wait to get them back and and let them tell us so we can deliver to them exactly what they want. Awesome. Well, I appreciate the time and uh, have a good one this weekend. Thank you, man. Hey guys, we have time for a few more questions. We haven't gotten any international uh, questions as yet. Operator, are you able to to pull one or two international outlets? Uh yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, let me go to Miguel Yusenda with Mundo Deportivo. Hello, Miguel, your line is open. Please go ahead. Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, some of the NXT talent were called up to Monday Night Raw to compete on Raw Underground. underground. Will that be something useful from now on? And could you explain us the process of deciding who is moving there or not? Yeah, I think Raw, Raw Underground is, is a unique environment, and I think that a lot of it is um, a unique opportunity for certain talent that have a, a, a particular skill set to show off a little bit more of what they can do. And I don't necessarily mean that they have to be, you know, uh, le have a legitimate shoot fight background, but that, but that can handle that, that different style. And um, it's a, it's a very cool opportunity. And I don't necessarily believe that as you've seen over the coming weeks or the, the last few weeks that, um, you know, seeing a, seeing a talent on Raw Underground means they are now a Raw talent or anything else. I think there's opportunities for people to come in and crisscross and have a moment in time where they uh, they do well in a different environment or they don't do well in that different environment and, and see what happens. But all those things are great opportunities to expose um, a, a large audience to new talent and their skill sets um, and 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 see where that goes. So it, it, for me, I, I like it, and it's a, a unique opportunity. Uh, and any time you can give someone an opportunity, it's great. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. Next, we'll move to Raul Sadu with Indian Express. Hi, Paul. Hey, Raul. Hi. So uh, my question is... Uh, Keeping the larger picture in mind, uh, without any crowd reactions, without any adrenaline rush, you know, how difficult has it been for the talent to prepare mentally? For 
not only Italian, for everybody associated with that industry. I think it's it's difficult. You know, it's um, and as a performer, there is no bigger um, adrenaline rush or you know, it's it's why you do what you do. That crowd, that rush of excitement, that energy that they give you, it's why you do what they do, um, or why you do what you do. Um, you know. You can't really put into to words how much that means as a performer. So to be able to go out there and create that in and of yourself, to create that in your own mindset, the excitement, the the energy level, the, um, the just that that impact of what you're doing, the gravity of what you're doing, the urgency of what you're doing, to create that in yourself is incredibly difficult. Um, you know, I've 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 watched matches over the year that it, it, you know over the years, and and when I was coming up um, and was watching matches for myself, I used to turn the sound off a lot um, to not have commentary and not have crowd noise to see where people were were um, doing different things and the energy levels and the changes, the gear changes, all those different things within the business. To me, that's a big learn factor, and and then watching it back with the sound on and and seeing what drove them to do different things, um, you know, you gear what you do towards that crowd, and when there isn't one there, it's tough because you're trying to create that in your own mind and react to it accordingly. So it's been extremely difficult. But my hat is off to everybody, men, women, everybody across the board on what we do, even even commentary teams and and. Um, you know, ring announcers, everything. It, it, they're bringing their own energy every week, not in a perfect scenario. This isn't, you know, it's not the product you want to be able to give everybody. But everybody is, in my opinion, knocking it out of the park to give fans the best that they can. And, and I know there's a lot of, you know, people talk about a lot of things, but everything that we are doing is to try to deliver to our fans um, a product. That, that they can enjoy and, and um, you know, going to extraordinary lengths to continue to provide that for them. Um, everything we're doing is for them, uh, whether they want to think that or not. That is why we do what we do every single day um, is, is to have them be able to enjoy it, to put a smile on their face, to let them forget about everything that's going on in the world and to just – just kick back, kick back and, and relax and enjoy what I consider to be the greatest form of entertainment in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll get two more our... international calls. I'm sorry, okay. we'll get two more international calls, then we'll wrap up for closing comments. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll move next to Alistair McGeorge with Metro UK. Uh, hi, Paul. How's it going? Good, sir. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. You spoke really highly at the top of the call about Pat McAfee, and I was just wondering, could this match lead to something more long-term or permanent for him in the ring? And also, how do you kind of assess his early potential compared to other crossover talent? Uh, we'll we'll see, obviously. Um, you know, Pat is an amazing athlete. I think he uh, he said it in, in one of the interviews he did where he said, like, this is like the... You know, he's he's made millions of dollars in seven different professions. And, you know, he's a, a guy that was an incredibly high-level athlete at, at professional sports that ended up uh, getting offered a ton of money to to be a kicker in the NFL and took it. Yeah. Um, but he grew up a WWE fan and always dreamed about doing this. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. I'll be honest with you, when I first met Pat and, uh, you know, uh, he came to some shows and we talked and talked to him about doing some stuff with us and, and doing some, you know, the pre-shows and some commentary. I, I didn't understand his level of fan, uh, you know, that he grew up being. I didn't understand his level of desire to actually do this and to not only, you know, he, he wasn't looking to come in and just, oh, you know, I'll just uh, be a little part of it or something like that like like a, a celebrity so he was looking to come in and be a WWE superstar he was looking to have an opportunity and an avenue for that um here he is 
we'll see where that goes. I can tell you this. I've, I've, I've seen a video. I've, I've watched him train now. He's a natural. He is athletically gifted um, in a way that very few people are. And, you know, that's for the last however many years, um, you know, not, not even counting my in-ring career. It's just watching talent, right, and, and through the process of recruiting and everything else, seeing people, I, I few, see very few people that come in as athletically gifted as he is. Um, on top of that, even if you didn't know that, you go like, wow, his charisma and his personality are off the chart. Um, it, you know, his gift of gab, it's getting him to stop talking. That's the issue, <laughs> not getting him started. Um, you know, he, he all the tools are there. What he does with them is on him, right? So uh, where this goes, I, I can't 100% say, but uh, the reason I'm putting him in that spot the reason why he he's doing this with us in NXT, um, where the level of performance is is what matters, um, and the scrutiny will be different, right? That, that there's a reason why he's doing it there because I believe that he has that skill set and the avail, a, a, ability to do it. Now, that being said, he's working with the probably the most gifted guy. Um, or at least one of, for sure, but maybe the most gifted guy on our roster. And if I was going to say, uh, you know, who would I say can can uh, can pull a, a great match out of anybody, it's, it's Adam Cole. So um, I'm looking forward to this being spectacular on both their sides. I know they both want it to be. And um, I think you're going to see something special. Where that goes, you know, it, it also depends on Pat. He's got a lot of he got a lot of irons and a lot of fires and a lot of opportunity out there. But I know he's very hungry for this and uh, looking forward to making this something special. Fantastic! Uh, cheers for your time and good luck this weekend. Uh, thank you very much. We'll move next to Nims Azur with SEN Radio Australia. Hey Nim. Hey Hunter. Hey Hunter, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm going fantastically, really gunning for NXT this weekend. Uh, I want to f- focus on one talent that uh, we in Australia have had our eyes on for a long time, and I know that you've had your eyes on to considering the amount of Aussies that are in NXT, but Bronson Reed, he's going to be in a, in a ladder match for the NXT North American Championship. This is probably one of the biggest matches for an Australian superstar since Buddy Murphy's original run in NXT. Uh, what's your thoughts of Bronson from what you've seen? Because he doesn't look like your your prototype sort of superstar. He's a very different looking cat. But uh, what are your thoughts when you first saw him and how he sort of progressed from day one in NXT to where he is before his takeover debut? So I, I love the. It's, it's funny you say like he's not the the prototypical. Uh, look or whatever like I love that's what I love about it it's it's not the same like I love the differences in everybody and not looking for uh one model not looking for one model of of what people look like talk like how they perform in the ring we want them to be themselves and and do their own thing but it's it's hard when they walk through the door there's a they, you know there's a preconceived expectation of what we're looking for sometimes and as much as you say uh you know come on, let, let go. I've seen you do this before you came here. Let go and be yourself. It's hard to get people to do that um, because they think they believe they know what you want and, and uh, what everything that's being looked for. There's uh, a lot of factors that go into this intimidation factors of, of walking in the door, performing on a different platform, uh, you know, leaving home, coming into a, a completely different country, different world, all those things that they were all factors in people's um, success rate and their speed. But at the same point in time, while he's had every tool and, and gift there, you want to, you want it to be when he is ready to be able to, uh, to, to utilize all those things and be able to succeed in the biggest way possible. So if he's uncomfortable, if he's not quite there in his own mind or whatever that is, um, you, you give little bits and pieces and see how it goes. He's there now. He's ready. Um, it's amazing to me. It's funny. There's an, another guy that a similar thing. Keith Lee and I were talking about it the other day, and uh, 
Keith, you know, he was in the ring doing something and Keith and I looked at him and Keith said, man, I'm so proud of him. Like he's really come into his own in this brand and recently, you know, and it, it is, it, it takes a minute for you to, um, to realize that I think, and everybody has their own time frame of that, but then to come into your own in the environment and, and really become comfortable with it. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I go back to the story Stone Cold Steve Austin used to tell all the time about, you know, Vince standing at the curtain and, and, and watching somebody work and Steve putting him over and then Vince saying to Steve, like, yeah, I really hope that guy, I hope he gets over, you know, and it dawning on Steve that what he means, I'm going to give him the opportunity. Let's see what he does with it. Um, that's what a lot about the, a lot of this is, is it's about that opportunity and, and what can you do with it? And, um, you know, for the guy, a guy like Bronson now, as he's getting that opportunity, man, he is just knocking it out of the park every single week. And, uh, you know, his future's bright to me. It's, it's, um, can't say enough good stuff about him. And I'm excited this, this Saturday, you know, he's one of those guys that, uh, at, at, uh, at way up into the 300 pound range, climbing a, uh, an eight or a 10 or a 12 foot ladder. And, and, uh, it's not the climb, it's the coming down part that uh, that gets a bit skiffy, but he can do all of that stuff. So where usually you look at the smaller guys and go, oh my God, there's going to be a bunch of crazy flips and all that stuff. You, you look at him and go like, yeah, but there's going to be a 400 pound version of that. It's a, it's a different game and it's a, uh, he's a, he's a game changing talent in a lot of ways and, and uh, can't say enough good stuff about him. And he's really hit a comfort level now where I think he's ready to go and, uh, and just sky's the limit. Well, on, be- on behalf of Australia, we love what, uh, you've been, how well you've been looked after, our talent and superstars there. And we've got plenty more if you need any. But uh, thanks so much yeah. for your time. And uh, fingers crossed we get to see you on our shores uh, at some point in time. Yeah, we'll, hopefully we'll be there soon. I know, uh, I know you guys are a little bit more open. Uh, hopefully we'll be there soon. But uh, just so everybody there is aware, Australia is one of my favorite shopping uh, places for talent. So uh, look forward to being there soon. We'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. All right, folks, that'll wrap up today's comments call. I'm just going to turn it back over to Paul for some closing comments. Yeah, um, I want to thank everybody for the for the call and the questions, all of it. Um, you know, having this uh, ability for all of you to have an open door policy on the questions and everything like that for me is is uh, very meaningful, and thank you for doing it. I, w- I would like to, because I thought it might come up in the call, and it didn't, but I would like to talk about... Um, the the new uh programming on WWE network and the, and that is you know with evolve and progress and WXW and insane championship wrestling just ICW coming into the mix and and us being able to put those on platforms i know there's been a lot of talk about those over the last few years um conversations around if and when and all of that and and you see it now at a place where we're at i'm really excited about that the opportunity for these other um promotions and um for the ability for everybody to see young talent up and coming talent um returning talent whatever that is but to see the different styles the different things that we get to see on a regular basis is not easy to get to catch all of it um we're hoping to be able to put that all into one place and and uh kind of have the network wwe network be a hub for all those things um You'll see more announcements on that, I'm sure, and more opportunities for people. So uh, it's a very exciting time, and, and that's something that we've been working on for a few years. And uh, and here we are now, and it's coming to fruition and, and people seeing it. So it's very exciting for me. And them being able to put their content out there and show it to the world because they're, they're really great promotions. And, um, you know, uh, I'm excited to work with all of them. Um, as far as that, uh, you know, the rest of it goes, thank you for your participation. Uh, NXT tonight should be great, leading us to NXT TakeOver 30 this Saturday. I believe this is another NXT TakeOver. We talk about them all the time, but uh, this is one you won't want to miss. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>